Do we want to talk? Uh, I kind of want to rant about the Freddie Anderson stuff. Do it. Do well, it. Here's the thing. I'm starting to get painted as like the Freddie Anderson apologist of the market. Mm. And <laughs> I, I think this is, I'm the only person who sees this correctly. You are just befuddled by this. I, maybe I'm the only person who's publicly. Bob-smack. Because I'm hearing from people privately about how they feel about Freddie Anderson. And a lot of people I respect. And it's pretty much the same take across the board. But the tweet, uh, like the takes that you're seeing online... I find her like so disconnected from reality. Oh, really? That You're just it, noticing that. That it's hard. <laughs> yeah, I know. But this in particular, that it's, I'm like, I'm having problems with this. I don't think Freddie Anderson has played well this season. Since November, he has been far, 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 far from the Freddie Anderson that we've grown accustomed to. It used to be ebbs and flows, this guy would be. But one of the things that makes him one of the best goaltenders in the NHL is his ability to make high danger saves. Sean Tierney posted one of the charts that I liked the most, which is high danger save percentage, right? It's like what guys do in the most difficult of situations. And after November, I think Freddie Anderson was lead, was third in the NHL. And that's really impressive considering like the volume in which he faces those shots at, right? Mm-hmm. Ever since then, he hasn't been very good at those. It's been a clear lacking element of his game. He has not made the big stop enough times, especially recently where they've really needed him to just kind of get hot and carry them through some defensive struggles, through some roster juggling, all kinds of different stuff, right? They're in a push. They need one of their best players, which I think he is, to be one of their best players. If Austin Matthews went a month and a half with three goals, we'd be talking about it every day. So it's totally justified to be discussing Freddie Anderson as an element of why this team is not succeeding. I don't know how this makes me sound like an apologist. I'm telling you, he's struggled. He has not been good. Drop the big butt. Since (laughs) Freddie Anderson came back from injury, point to me the game that Freddie Anderson has hurt this team or killed this team. He's let in one bad goal against Florida. And then his team came to his rescue, which many times over his career, they have not. And then what happens? He shuts it down in the third period. He makes a bunch of really good saves, and he justifies the decision of his coach not to pull him when the erratic fan base wants to see Jack Campbell every time this guy lets in a goal. Same, let's fast forward to the, to the next game. What That's happened? an undercurrent here, by the way. Everyone got super excited about Campbell. And they're, yes, they're itching, of course. Itching to make and guess thing. what? I like Campbell, too. Yeah. Guess what I like him as? What he is right now. Yeah. A backup goaltender that plays for you in back-to-backs. And if you want to lighten the load for Freddie Anderson, can jump in and give you serviceable play. Yeah. But let's not confuse these two players. Like, it's very, very clear who the better one of the two is and who, the, who they need in order to make a Stanley Cup run. It's not like You're Jack not a- Campbell has no track record in the NHL. You're not abandoning faith in one of your best players. Like, I, I could just imagine if... You know, uh, William Nylander was in a slump and he got slammed down to the fourth line as he's slumping right now. What the reaction would be. You let him play through it. You let your stars play through it. With Freddie Anderson, it's like the reaction to it is completely opposite. It's like sit him on the bench, never play him again. Oh, I'm so glad we started Freddie tonight. I see all these different things. He's been more than fine over the stretch. Plays really well against Buffalo. What happens? His team can't do a damn thing. Doesn't do a damn thing in front of him. Leave him hanging out to dry until the third period where the walls finally crumble. Then they play Pittsburgh. What happens? They lay their biggest egg of the season. They're allowing the Pittsburgh Penguins, one of the best teams in the league, letting Sidney Crosby on power plays shoot tap-ins over to guys where it's like, oh, bang, another goal on Freddie's far post. Where's the goal in that game that, that sewered them? Like, find me the yeah. example of this. Well, that's- like, they play Carolina. He, they, he stops, what, 45, 46 shots, multiple breakaways. The team lays another egg. What, where is this in terms of his fault? They play the Florida Panthers. He lets in the worst goal of the season. He's getting hammered. The Vancouver game, of all the times to point to Freddie Anderson as, like, the guy who has been bad, lets in a goal that Rasmus Sandin turns it over, loses the puck battle. It goes right across the slot, onto someone's tape, perfect shot, into the back of the net. No goalie ever saves it. And Twitter's apoplectic about his save percentage to start the game. It doesn't matter when the goals come. It matters how the game finishes in terms of your save percentage. And guess what happened? Freddie Anderson let in two goals and then shut the door and was fine the rest of the game. Like, this idea that we're tying Freddie Anderson's games right now to games from two months ago is one of the most horrific narratives I've ever seen in Toronto Maple Leaf land in terms of this team is great, except Freddie Anderson has been bad. We're not watching the same game. And I get it. This is my theory. I'm sorry, but this is, again, the people look at some of the numbers and they say the Leafs should be one of the best teams in the NHL. And the Leafs are a good team in the NHL. It's pretty clear that when they play the Floridas, the world, or the mediocre teams, that they are better than them. They can hang with the Pittsburghs. They just beat Tampa Bay. Like, they're in that group. They've been disappointing this season. They need to point to why some of these expected stats are not working out this way. 
And one of the things is that the goaltending has been subpar. And so when they look at the numbers and just as a whole, it's like, this is the puzzle piece. This is the thing that ties everything together. This is the reason that the Leafs aren't doing it. And it's asinine. It's really, really asinine. And I find it funny that a community that was so angry for so long about being on the outside or being uh, that narratives were inflexible and that people had bias have become the most inflexible people with the greatest bias. And it's just, it's enough. It's, it's enough. So no, do I think Freddie Anderson's been good? No. Am I an apologist? I, I guess if you say so. Like, I don't think he's played very well. But do I think that the Maple Leafs are just elite goaltending or good goaltending away from being one of the elite teams, the Bostons or the Tampa Bays of the world? No, I don't. Yeah, no, I, I agree. The So two things to stand out for me. One is, and I've mentioned this before, I used to, I used to sit beside uh, Pierre Greco, the Marley's goalie coach, and the goalie would come in and sit down and go over their previous game. And they would say, you know, what could happen? You know, what were what happened on this play? What happened on this goal? And often we would lose a game like 5-2, and the conclusion was, great game. Mm-hmm. You played well. You know, you just a couple of tough tough breaks here or there, you know, whatever, that didn't go our way. Uh, I thought you, you played really well. You made some nice saves. And it's like, oh, that can happen. Like, mm-hmm. it's, it's possible that, you're, you know, you can give up on a bunch of goals and not really be the problem. So that is one thing. And the other thing is that I, I just I do want to echo the sentiment that I, I am very much in favor of, of the push towards analytics. But it, so are we. It, Look it, who you, we have on the show. <laughs> right. But it used to be that the analytics commu- community would give a hard time to the eye test guys because they were being lazy. Mm-hmm. They wouldn't look deeper into things. Well, right now it feels like there's a lot of sorting of the analytics and then being lazy, not looking deeper into it from, from yeah. an eye test or a video perspective. 